All right, so do we really need transcatheter solutions for tricuspid regurg regurgitation? I say yes, and I'll explain why. So tricuspid regurgitation, as you have seen, is an extremely challenging disease. It's very complex, like that of the mitral valve, and as Max showed, probably more complex than the mitral valve. We can't even decide on the classification of severity. And these are very, very sick patients. By the time we get them, they typically have RV dilatation and RV failure. They're surgically undertreated, despite we know that treatment impacts the prognosis of these patients. The current guidelines may not be aggressive enough, but now we have this landscape of multiple different types of transcatheter devices. So you've seen this slide now multiple times, um, and this is actually where I got the answer from. Dr. Bowling. Um, so in 2018, only 8,000 tricuspid surgeries were done, despite the fact that there was about 1.6 million people with tricuspid regurgitation. So there's a need. So why would we do this anyway? What's the data behind that? Well, we know from, from this study at least that moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation affects cardiac events. In this case, cardiac events is defined as cardiac death and heart failure. And as you can see, if you have moderate to severe TR, then you have an increase in cardiovascular events. This continues with survival. If you have moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation, then you have a decrease in your survivability. And it doesn't matter whether you're asymptomatic or symptomatic. If you have severe, moderate to severe asymptomatic tricuspid regurgitation, you still have an increase in cardiac events and a decrease in survival. It might not be as much as symptomatic TR, but it's still statistically significant and clinically significant. So what about if you have a mitral valve repair or replacement? So there was some thought at one time that if you fix the mitral valve, the TR will go away. Well, this does not seem to be the case. At any degree of TR, if you still have that after mitral valve surgery, mild, moderate, or severe, then you have a decrease in survivability. So it's extremely important to, f to fix this, and it probably should not go um, untreated. So what about progression of, um, of TR? How do we know? Well, in this study, it was a meta-analysis of 2,400 patients over 10 studies, and they found that age, whether or not the uh, mitral valve was rheumatic, whether or not you had atrial fib, whether or not you had a maze procedure at the time, or if you had a large left atrial uh, diameter, or if you did not get your tricuspid fix, then you were at increased risk for progression of, um, of your TR. So in this case, 23% of these patients progressed to moderate or severe TR over a two to four to eight year period. And as we just saw earlier, if you have moderate to severe TR, then you have a worse prognosis. So the same thing holds true with TR after mitral clip. So these three studies, small studies, but still important, after uh, mitral clip, if you still had residual TR, then you had a decrease in, in survival. So this is a very uh, morbid and, uh, disease that needs to be fixed. So the good Dr. Bowling over here wrote this paper in 2009 that showed if left untreated at the time of surgical mitral valve repairs and you had significant residual TR, then this negatively impacts perioperative outcomes, functional class, and survival. So it's really important to get this fixed. Led to the surgical guidelines, and as Dr. Mack already showed you, that there were only three indications for um, for isolated tricuspid regurgitation fix. So should we just fix this at the time of left-sided valve surgery? Well, what about if we have a percutaneous approach? Does this make it more accessible to be able to fix because it's a less morbid um, procedure or potentially less morbid procedure? Well, as was stated earlier, you know, we really have to be able to pick these patients. So tricuspid regurg is a progressive disease. And so initially, when you first see these patients, the, um, the right treatment is probably medical therapy, and you watch these patients. But if they progress, then they should get some interventional treatment, whether it be surgical or percutaneous. And we have to really be able to identify the end-stage 
patient as Dr. Max showed because these patients will die despite um, the treatment that we give. So this was recently just published um, in April in, in JAK Imaging, and this is a, um, is a way that they're uh, uh, um, uh, giving to decide whether or not we should uh, treat these patients. So they divide tricus tricuspid regurg into five stages. The first stage is those that you, that you watch and you may get yearly echoes to be able to, um, uh, to decide if they progress or not. This stage two through four is that which needs um, intervention. So stage two, these are the patients that are greater than moderate and may have mildly uh, dilated RVs. Um, and this you might consider tricuspid valve surgery at the time of left-sided surgery, or you may consider these patients for percutaneous interventions um, because it's a, a, a minimal risk procedure. This stage three here, these are those who have severe TR and again, tricuspid valve surgery um, during uh, left-sided procedures or even isolated tricuspid surgeries. And these are those patients that right now can be rolled into IDE, randomized controlled trials, for percutaneous interventions. And then the stage four patients, again severe, have um, more uh, dysfunction in their RV and more re remodeling that are probably high risk for surgery and should not, and may should not be done surgically, and these are the ones that can be rolled right now in the EFS trials. And then being really being able to identify the stage five patients, which again are those that are too far gone and probably just need palliative care. The problem with all this, however, is imaging. We still have a really hard time imaging these patients, and then even when we imaging, image them, we don't necessarily get the, the data that we want. We sometimes, by our gut, know that these patients have severe TR, but we just still can't get the, the measurements. And this may be due to a number of, re of reasons. A lot of these patients have pacemakers or even other devices in or other valves in, and it's shadow, so you can't really see these very well. There was a new grading scheme that was put together by Becky Hahn, who, and she published, published this, that put it into mild, moderate, severe, massive, and torrential TR. And using 3D vena contracta um, and quantitative VROA, which I think has helped uh, identify these patients a little bit better. Again, this is a proposal for quantifying TR, so not only should we use the echo criteria, but also the clinical criteria, and all that together can help decide whether these patients have um, uh, mild TR or moderate or above TR. So as was just shown in the prior lecture, there are multiple ways to fix the tricuspid valve um, with multiple varying results, and a lot of times there is still um, post-operative uh, tricuspid regurgitation, but this has led to the different transcatheter therapies for um, tricuspid as well. So we have multiple devices. You have direct and indirect annuloplasty rings such as a triline, cardioband, Fortec, and millipede, and then you have the leaflet devices that we're familiar with on the mitral side, like mitral clip, Pascal, and as well as Forma. And then you can have stinted valves in both the IVC and SVC to try to reduce the uh, tricuspid regurgitation. And then finally, valve replacement. There's specific valves that have been made for the tricuspid position, but also there has been some work in some of the mitral TMVRs to be placed in the uh, tricuspid position. All of these, however, are under studies. So this is what we really want to see, right? So here is severe TR, and then you put in one of these devices. Let's see if it will play. And you get a significant reduction almost to nothing. Um, and this is what we can get with, uh, hopefully, with a per percutaneous in intervention as well as surgical intervention. So... Transcatheter TR valve related device, I think that this would be a game changer. And this is really by allowing increased accessibility to TR therapy as an isolated or staged procedure after a successful left sided therapy, um, percutaneously or surgically. But again, these devices need to be tested for safety and efficacy before you know, they can go public. Thank you.